uh, dear students, welcome to today's class. So I hope all of you are safe and sound for the moment. Now, in regular class, what we do is we fo regularly focus on theories and book stuff, right? However, today's class is going to be a little bit different. So in today's class, we are going to focus more on uh, the application of theories, the practice in industries. So again, practical stuff is the main concern of today's class. So who else can be better in explaining this practical stuff to you other than an industry expert, right? So yes, we have an industry expert with us. We have Ms. Tasmia Tasbi Nova. Welcome, Apu. Uh, Thank it's really you. nice Thank to meet you. you. Uh, so uh, professionally, she is working as an uh, HR business partner in the supply chain and agile transformation lead department at Unilever. All right. So um, besides the professional identity, I would also like to say something else about her. So um, she's a uh, two years senior to me. <laughs> so uh, we graduated from the same university. So throughout the rest of the session, I'm, I'll be addressing her as Apu, if, if you don't mind. Uh, so it's going to be a sort of um, informal session here. And also uh, the two most important things about her outside of her professional life is uh, she's a wonderful artist <laughs> and she's also really, really expert at baking, all right? So I, I wish I could show you uh, some of her creations. Uh, so maybe some other time. Uh, so yes, Apu, um, let's start with today's session. So before going into the details, I'd like just to uh, tell you that yes, today you are the teacher, and I'm the student, all right? So I'm going to learn a lot of things from you and I'm going to ask a few questions and basically learn the answers to those questions from you. So what, what is uh, the practice like? So just to briefly tell you, uh, we want to discuss about the recruitment practice selection practice and training practices at Unilever, all right? So uh, a brief overview of these topics and more importantly, we are going to focus on the selection activities. So the students would love to know what do they do, uh, need to do uh, to prepare themselves as strong candidates for Unilever. So I would also like some suggestions from you for them in the future, all right? So just in, um, thanks for the introduction. I think you couldn't have said it any better. You've covered pretty much all aspects. But uh, just for the class, um, to give you a little bit of a background of who I am, of course, I have been working in uh, Unilever for the last uh, seven years. This is where I pretty much started my career after graduation. And it has been in HR. I worked in multiple pillars of HR. I started as an employee engagement manager and then quickly moved on to HR business partnering for corporate functions like finance, legal and IT. Uh, from there on, I became the leadership development manager uh, and um, also the employer brand manager, which, which got me to working with different universities and campuses. And I really loved that part of my job, to be very honest. That was my favorite stint. Uh, soon after that, um, I took over the role of HR business partner for one of the largest functions we have at Unilever, which is supply chain. I partner around um, 130 managers, full-time managers, and we also have more than 900 uh, uh, blue-collar employees. So I look after supply chain or, or our factory, so to say. Uh, apart from that, I'm also leading the agile transformation for Unilever Bangladesh, and that's an exciting piece of work for me because this is all about future-proofing the organization. Um, so yeah, that's a little bit about my career journey. And uh, like Sean has already pointed out that uh, I, lo I love to paint when I have some time. It's not like I get a lot of time, uh, spare time, but I do utilize it whenever I do get some time. Uh, other than that, I like uh, cooking. I, I bake a lot. So that's a little bit about me. I like to stay in touch with these passions so that work doesn't get too overwhelming. So it's, it's really important for me to have that balance, so to say. Um, thanks for having me here. I think honestly, when... Um, when Sean reached out that I would be doing some sort of a session for you as, as, a, as a class, um, I was just thinking what I could present to you that you already don't know. And my understanding is that you've already done your HR course, so to say, and have a fair understanding of what the um, principles of, of HR are, right? What are the fundamentals, uh, broad pillars like resourcing, recruitment, retention, reward, that kind of a thing. So I really won't be spending any time on that rather give you a practical exposure of what it is like to practice HR in an organization. Okay, so that's what my um, conversation will be mostly about. I hope you find it useful. And over to you, Sean, whichever question you want to throw at me first. 
thank you once again uh, for a lovely introduction. Again, uh, in-depth introduction on yourself. So yes, uh, it's lovely to have you here. So I'm going to start with the first question for today. All right. So first of all, Unilever is a dream destination for many of the students in our university, and and so to say, like not only our university, it's, it's across universities, right? So, uh, and as far as I know, Unilever Bangladesh has been like uh, the top employer brand in Bangladesh for eight consecutive years. I mean, I mean that's a lot, eight consecutive years. So uh, my first question would be, as a recruiter, like what are the things that you do to maintain such a good and strong employer brand? Right, right. So you're you're absolutely uh, right. You know we have a rich heritage, or a rich history of being the employer of choice consistently. Uh, it gets done through a survey uh, that you are aware of. Maybe um, some of you some of you have already heard about this survey. This is something that AC Nielsen does annually. Um, it involves a sample size across multiple universities throughout the country, uh, which gives us the result of whether an organization is the top employer in, in the minds of the students or not. So in that particular survey, we have consistently been the employer of choice. Of course, the journey hasn't been easy. It seems like, you know, we, we have it easy every year, but there's immense amount of work that really goes behind it. First of all, in creating a strong employer brand and of course, being able to retain that title. So there's a lot of work that goes behind it. Okay, and I'll try to give you a very, um, an overview in a nutshell, so to say, okay? So we have a very holistic approach when it comes to employer brand strategy, okay? But first it starts with understanding the external talent market. Before we understand our external market, it's not really possible to craft a strategy that will work, okay? So it's important to do that first, okay? And there are different subgroups of talent, if you think about it, that require different attraction strategy. Broadly, we divide them into two groups. Right. The first group would be fresh graduates or young professionals who has had one or two years of work experience. And the second group would be mid career recruits, yeah, which are people who have at least five years of external experience. So they are more experienced. They've seen the market. They've worked in other organizations. So your employer brand strategy or, or your attraction strategy cannot really be something um, that is constant for all groups. OK, you have to modify and tweak it according to your target. So I will mostly talk about fresh graduates because this is a this is a course for I'm guessing third four year students. So it will make more sense to you. But I'm just saying that it's important to first have a view of your talent market before you internally decide what your employer brand strategy should be. So we do that bit of research. And of course, the AC Nielsen survey helps us get some insights from the market as well. It get, gets us a pulse check of how we are doing as an organization, okay? What are the parameters where we probably need to focus a little bit more on? Are the students thinking that we are giving the right kind of opportunities? Are we giving enough learning opportunities? So those kind of insights come from the survey itself. So all of these combined, it helps us to just create a more robust strategy, so to say, okay? And once we have that understanding, as well as having an understanding of the other competitors in the market. What are some of the other employers doing? Okay, it's equally important to have a pulse check on that. Okay, because you can't be an organization just operating in silo without having any vision whatsoever about what is happening externally. What are the other employers doing? Are you lacking behind when it comes to um, digital innovation. So that kind of a thing, okay? You have to always keep your radar high. That's number one in creating a strong employer brand. Number two is, even though we have a dedicated employer brand team, I'll tell you this much, it is not just the team's job to create a strong employer brand, okay? Each and every employee of an organization plays a very crucial part in creating a strong employer brand. Think about it this way. No matter what I do as an HR manager to create employer brand, if some of our organization's employees okay, are dissatisfied with whatever reason, maybe they're not having growth in the organization, maybe they're not learning enough, maybe the culture isn't right. When those employees go out there and speak to their peers and family members and you know juniors, think about the impact that would have on the students. In a way, if these employees are able to really speak highly of the organization they work, work in, that is the most organic way of employer brand. If you, if you really try to I mean, understand how it works. So 
it doesn't matter if the team hr team only does activities and interventions it really won't help unless the entire organization truly believes that this is the organization to work in you have to first satisfy your employees before you are even going to think about attracting new people to join right you can't have internal aspects at fault and then go externally and tell your students tell the campus tell the young graduates that come and join unilever or come and join any organization that will never work okay so the first thing is to fix your internal uh, facets which which are ultimately what you talk about when you go to any kind of campus connects for example unilever talks a lot about empowering um, you know empowering people to do their best you know bringing in that um, spirit of experimentation we don't like to micromanage even to interns we like to give them real projects to work on you know we are equally respondent to their ideas and their views and opinions right no one disses them okay you are an intern what will you know so that kind of a culture is something that is inherent in in the organization otherwise you know your your the people you are trying to attract to come and join the organization will never see see or experience it so my philosophy is fix your organization first it will automatically have a ripple effect on your um on your employer brand as a whole you'll be able to attract the best talent why otherwise why will people want to join your organization okay now having said that while we do things internally the third step is to make sure there is an absolute effective way of communicating that to the market that is where the employer brand team comes in okay where their responsibility is to bridge the gap between students and the organization okay and create channels where the students can come in and experience uh, the organization you know through programs like internship leadership internship program through through campus ambassador programs so the employer brand team makes these uh, interventions and creates these interventions as a strategy to help these young talents in the market to come and experience unilever get an idea of what it is truly like to to be actually working in an organization like this okay so that is where the um, core employer brand team actually comes to play other than that i would say that it is absolutely everyone's responsibility equally it is all the hr managers responsibility to ensure the employer brand is quite strong and we leverage a lot on our cross functional business leaders okay we always try to get them to interact with universities like we have very recently we have had um, you know leaders and managers from supply chain from finance from marketing from sales run campus outreach programs the reason behind that is we want our managers to also stay close to the campus and we also want the students to get a glimpse of what it is like to work at unilever okay what what does a day in a brand manager's life look like what does a what does a supply chain professional do so it the employer brand strategy revolves around creating those channels or platforms or opportunities where the young talents are exposed to the corporate environment even before they are recruited okay so which is why our strategy is not just focused towards fourth year students we actually have different kinds of interventions for students across the university we start from first year because we want to be top of mind for the first year students as well we don't want to just bombard you with information and and the great things about our organization only when you're at a uh, later stage of your career we want to be top of mind from the very beginning so that you also start to experience it as you go along you, you, in your career we have freelancing opportunities for second and third year students right who has classes to do but at the same time maybe have has some potential capacity to spare if they want to be involved in a freelancing project okay so we ha- have very defined very strategic interventions for different um uh, years of students so for first year we have something for second third year we have something and of course for the final year uh, students we have um biz maestros which is our flagship business competition and of course at the end of the year you get to experience the leadership internship program as well as the management trainee recruitment program so while our interventions are consolidated or 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 a little bit um uh, concerted for the fourth year students because that's when they really get into the mode of looking for a job and you know trying to get meaningful uh, professional experience but we do ensure that we stay present throughout a students entire life cycle okay so that it's not suddenly 
Unilever arrives at a campus for the fourth year students. It 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 it'll never work. Okay, the the main thing is to stay present and to stay relevant. So that's a little bit in a nutshell about how we go about uh, creating a strong employer brand.